I never expected this game to be like this. I never expected this level of choice in question. I never expected this level of graphical design. I never expected it to be so live and have an actually believable world to escape to from daily life routine. I expected it to be luggy, overly monetized and grindy. I expected poor voice acting of the characters and overall blandness of NPCs. I expected the flashy combat, but I did not expect it to be so responsive and addictive. Overall, I expected it to have all the flaws of any other free MMORPG, but I never expected to have that much fun playing it. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex B, and this is the first time playing a series where I try a completely new game in the MMO genre, which is also completely new for me, to share my first impressions as a completely new player. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Today we are playing The Black Desert Online, one of the more famous MMORPGs developed and published by the Korean company Pearl Abyss. It is available on almost all possible contemporary platforms, varying from traditional PC and next-gen consoles to iOS and Android smartphones. In certain regions like Korea and Japan it's free to play, while in Americas, Europe and other regions it is buy to play with a price tag of $10 or any regional equivalent. Luckily, the game offers a 7-day trial before buying, so I decided to try before buying. But we'll return to the monetization policy of the game further in the video. As for now, let us download and launch the game. After the launch we see a whole list of different servers, which is already an intimidating thing for me as a casual player. As a filthy casual I do not want to make any choices after launching the game, I'd like to play it as fast as possible. Gladly, the first server on the list says novice only, so I clicked that one. I didn't have any understanding what all the features in the description mean, but apparently these are the so-called seasonal servers that allow to create seasonal characters that enjoy certain benefits compared to the regular characters. For all the people who are aware of this difference, please share your thoughts and comments about the system as I cannot really understand it for now. So we move on to the character creation screen. And there is 24 different classes in the game, which is cool, as they seem to be completely different with different set of skills and ways of combat. What I hate the most about this? Gender locking. In favor of female characters, of course. I understand that sex sells, but the Asian developers need to understand that for the Western players, the sex sells for the male characters as well. Yeah, I see that. Your daddy gave you good advice. But I digress. I choose the newest character in the shiny dragon-like armor and the next I'm being introduced to the character customization screen, which is surprisingly deep and complex. You can really customize almost everything in the character's appearance and make it look almost as beautiful as you are. Yes, you are more beautiful than any digital character on the screen, don't let anyone tell otherwise. Or you can mess around and make something like this. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Personally, I was satisfied with the default look of my character, I've given them a proper name and started my adventure at the world of the Black Desert Online. And immediately these jarring cuts into the cutscenes demonstrate a lack of optimization and proper quality control, but we'll address that later, as the actual introduction to the story is more than okay. We are venturing through the dunes of mysterious desert, accompanied by a witch in white robes. She tells us that we need to move forward and reach the ruins with an ancient relic she wants to collect. This is also the tutorial section that teaches us how to move the character and attack the enemies. Having completed the tutorial, we are rewarded with a sword in the back stabbed by the witch saying Shocked I betrayed the trust you gave so easily. Sorry, but you should have known better. She releases a lot of dark clouds from the relic and disappears, leaving us to die. But upon our last dying breath, a small dark cloud floats towards us and says, Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. This is basically the end of the tutorial and the game offers us a choice to either start a completely new and fresh adventure that follows right after the last scene or skip all the stuff and get to the content from the last update. This is an extremely great feature that I believe more games need to implement, especially when you want to try playing several characters and do not want to repeat the same 10-15 to 15 hour campaign once again. So as a new player I choose the first option and the story moves forward to us waking up in the middle of archaeological digging of a similar relic that we've seen in the tutorial. We meet new characters and they do their honest best to be somehow important and relevant, but 
The voice acting seems to hinder this significantly. It is not bad, but it's not that great to actually bring any life and charm to the majority of the characters. Sincerely apologize, princess. That was not what I meant when I... I shall punish you for your suspicions in time. For now, just concern yourself with how to restore his honor. Yes, I shall give this new recruit a fitting task. Even taking into consideration the fact that we will meet some of them during the gameplay many times, for me they still remain to be rather generic quest givers that require you to move to a certain point on the map and hunt a certain number of monsters. Which is a shame, because the stories during the main quest lines are rather interesting and contribute to the development of the whole gameplay plot. I won't spoil too much of it, but I'll say that the White Witch has released that dark energy, which started manifesting across the gaming world, corrupting many of its inhabitants, and it is our task to deal with this. And the game offers at least some sort of variation in dealing with the quests. While the vast majority of the quests in Black Desert Online comprises traveling from point A to point B, collecting certain item, killing a certain number of monsters, and eventually fighting the quest boss, there is also a degree of variety to some extent. The story quests offer us a choice to determine how a certain quest will go on. Mostly it is the choice between more interactions with NPCs and reading more text, while farming less monsters and vice versa. In other words, if a new player enjoys combat more than the story, they can choose to grind their way through. I've chosen to interact with NPCs more and also was not disappointed with this choice, despite the aforementioned voice acting limitations. And I believe this is the foundation for the role-playing features of the MMOs that should be seen more frequently in your games. But before I start complimenting the combat and the world-building design of the game, let me address the obvious. The UI. There is a lot of buttons. There is a lot of menus and windows. There is a lot of text and images on the screen so that I got lost in all of them almost immediately after the tutorial section. There are buttons for skills, there are buttons for quests, there are buttons for horse, there are buttons for buttons, and that's just too much. I really appreciate the developers for the inclusion of the UI customization option and the ability to turn on the so-called combat mode, which minimizes almost all the information except the essential points. But it really feels like a lazy design feature, especially when taken from the new player's perspective. I believe a new player should get introduced to these buttons only if they need to, so they could familiarize with them. By the way, having reached level 50 after playing for approximately 10 to 12 hours, I got used to all of the UI sections and found them actually useful, which doesn't reject my point that the new player may be intimidated by it and simply drop the game to play something more user experience friendly. The combat of the game is the feature that shines the most. My Dracaria character is a melee sword fighter that is fast, highly evasive and massively powerful against the crowds of surrounding enemies. Her attacks are infused with the power of lightning and flame, which adds even more to the badassness of her fighting style. She does single attacks, she does multiple slash combos, she does AoE attacks, she even does ranged attacks when she charges the energy in her sword and launches it forward. And most importantly, when timed correctly, all the skills can be changed to the combo similar to the conventional slash games like Devil May Cry, for example, Bayonetta or Metal Gear Rising. And for this specific reason, I appreciate the inclusion of the UI window with the button combinations and the explanations what they do. This window allowed me to learn the combinations quicker and enjoy the flashiness and responsiveness of the combat much better. I was literally surprised by the feeling of the combat. The attacks actually had some weight and resistance when hitting the enemies. The sound design complemented the visual effects simply outstandingly. If all the money of the development team went to the combat mechanic, while the rest of the elements like UI optimization and voice acting remained underfunded, it is still fine by me. The combat kept me playing for much longer than I expected. <laughs> When I got tired from the combat sessions, I was immediately refreshed by the continuation of the story and the whole downtime during the traveling. Yes, you need to spend time traveling, as there are no means of quick travel or teleporting. At least, I couldn't find any. During the campaign, I was gifted a mount, a traditional horse that can be customized, equipped with various tools and fed to maintain its health and stamina. The horse was the only way of transportation of my lazy butt. However, at the end of the day I was really satisfied with this design choice. The traveling time actually felt real, due to the graphics and overall style of Black Desert Online. 
Its world, its cities, its embassies, buildings and other objects and subjects are heavily inspired by the Western Renaissance years, with knights in shining armor, the cities built of stone, the alchemists in robes and mysterious cultists plotting secret rituals. I was left with an impression that I visited the fantasy version of Italy or Spain during the Renaissance, with the cities always busy trading and arguing over prices, the taverns loud from the drunk travelers, the cozy villages with poorer but hardworking people making ends meet during their daily activities, the wild plains surrounded by monsters, the colors of the vegetation, the colors of the sun and water, all of these graphical details actually felt like the environments that you want to live in and not some bland artificial decorations. Unfortunately, it is poorly optimized. Despite the fact that the game offers a lot of customization for the graphical settings, I've experienced stutters during the traveling and questing sessions, while facing almost no issues during the combat segments, which seem to be more graphically intensive sections of the game. Maybe it is the problem of Shader Cache or any other, but I believe that it stems from the fact that Black Desert Online has the least amount of loading screens possible. But knowing that there is a complete and detailed guide on optimization on the Reddit that the people use to boost FPS and make the game more stable, suggests that the optimization could be further improved by the developers. At the same time, when the game performs fine and delivers the stable frame rate, it offers one of the most atmospheric and even breathtaking scenes that I've seen in MMORPG so far, and I've seen only three games before. I know. For example, one of the most memorable sections of the game was after the end of one of the minor segments of the story quest. I was given a task to go to a certain castle to speak with a certain knight. Upon arriving, I discovered that the castle is being attacked by the violent harpies and there is a full-scale siege that doesn't allow me to progress without a fight. I fight my way through, speak to the knight, proceed with my quest and help to fend the harpies off. Black Desert Online has relatively weak voice acting and rather bland NPC models, but the storytelling delivered by the surrounding objects and subjects compensate this a lot. And that's why I even believe that leaving the NPCs voiceless and allowing the player to read their lines would complement the story even better. Because if you want to, you can imagine the voices by yourself and they will definitely be better than the voice acting delivered by the game. By the way, the game indeed has a lot of text. It's in the manuals to an array of combat and non-combat activities that can be done by every player. The players can engage in trading between each other and transferring the goods using the caravans. They can gather various resources and engage in crafting. They can improve their equipment and craft different items to develop their characters. And of course, they can fish. All the information about the activities is being given by the guides accessible by the F1 and F2 buttons. There is a minor fraction of story-driven quests that slightly touch on the gathering and crafting mechanics. However, there is even more to read from the official Black Desert Guide. Despite the fact that I don't like the game to dump the loads of text instead of making meaningful content that teaches the mechanics, I like that it doesn't force them on the player and simply pops up a window with an array of possible activities upon reaching level 50. So it's not the approach of do whatever you want, but you can actually play however you want. And you are given the choices how you can do this. Finally, the cash shop and other forms of monetization. Taking into account that it is a relatively free game, its monetization system is rather intimidating. There is a battle pass that gives certain items for completing specific tasks. There are purchasable buffs, inventory expansions and other boosts and skins that vary from relatively stylish to this. And of course, there is a range of over-sexualized customs as well. But as a new player, I never felt any need to spend money right now, so let's read the Steam reviews regarding all the Black Desert experiences. This game is about as grindy as they come. It's great for those who want to spend hundreds upon hundreds of hours accomplishing mostly nothing. Your progress in the game is relative. I've never been more frustrated just trying to learn how to play a game. What a mess this is. Main thing is there is probably a good game in here, just such a cluster of horrible UI constant pop-ups and pay to play. This isn't a game, it's a commercial. Typical MMO, if you're looking just to chill and not to take it too seriously, it's fine for that. Obviously though, there will always be another pack or expansion, you can dump a lot of money into the game and you still won't keep up. If you don't want to dump money into the game, there is still a lot to do, just know you won't be competing seriously with anyone else. The reason I don't recommend, the exploitation of your psychology is also perfectly designed. From the first time you get ganked and swear to yourself, I'll get my revenge once I gear up, through the constant shower of micro-rewards. 
Mutual Gain 24-7, Gambling Based Enhancement, and Exponential Sunk Cost. This is a game designed to exploit your every weakness to take out your credit card. I have now 5,660 and a half hours on this account beside this, and I have a better account that I played on when the game came out. AKA, let me tell you about the game that will make you lose your mind in multiple ways. If you like exploring, traveling, following a story, questing, and life skilling, you will be drawn to this game from the get go. Also, you can drop all of your ideas of your perfect e girl in the character design. Just don't. You can read someone who speedran the game or someone like me who actually spent almost 2k hours in one or two months playing the game. My choice is yours. I won't sugarcoat my review. Do I still play and love the game? Yes, and I'd recommend it to a responsible player even with a lot of its shortcomings I'm about to list. This MMO can be expensive. It depends on you. But at the same time, if we trust the Steam statistics, there are almost 15,000 players that play it on Steam. I bet there are also a lot of players on console and mobile. So I guess not all of them are masochists with Stockholm Syndrome and they find some sort of fun playing this. So let us summarize the good, the bad and the ugly of Black Desert Online. The good. Graphics and style are awesome and full of atmosphere. The combat is jaw-dropping and surprisingly comparable to one of the better slasher games available right now. A lot of choice during the quest and a lot of activities that the players can engage after the combat. Seasonal characters and servers that provide new player-friendly gaming experience. I am pleased not to have any urge to grind to a certain level to get another portion of starry content. The bet. UI is overcluttered and requires a lot of customization to become usable and not distracting from the gameplay. The graphical optimization is poor and there is a considerable lack of polish in regards to cutscenes and NPC animations especially. No quick travel option, which I consider an unnecessary downtime. I believe it's been done to mitigate any risks for trading, but I also believe that the faster transportation than mounts should have been given in some shape or form. The ugly. Monetization. However, if the game asks for $10 each season pass to progress, it's still cheaper than $15 subscription fee in any mainstream MMO. So, the choice is yours, I believe. Gender locking for classes. This is simply not okay, and I cannot find any objective reasons for the classes to not have both genders. Maybe, a part of the 24 classes, the male and female classes are somehow interchangeable, but I'd appreciate that the gender of the character could be an option, and not a requirement to play a certain class. Overall, it's definitely one of the better MMOs that I've had a chance to play. Yes, it has an array of technical flaws and supposedly the monetization is predatory and excessive. But I was left with an impression that Black Desert Online offers an atmospheric and a life virtual world for interaction between players, for gathering and crafting, and for highly entertaining combat. If you never tried BDO and are looking for something decent to play during your regular MMO burnout, it is quite a decent option, I believe, especially for the Xbox owners, as it is included in the Game Pass already. And that's it for today. If you want more videos with MMO discussions, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring the bell for notifications and leave a comment about your impressions about Black Desert as a new player, as an experienced player, and what MMO should I cover in my future videos. Thank you for watching, my name is Alex B, and I'll see you in the next one.